Okay, so what you see in an example problem uh, for three capacitors uh, which are connected in this uh, diagram wiring, uh, the capacitances are given and they are initially charged under these potential differences that you just see on the picture. And there are also these uh, two uh, switches which are initially open. Uh, and so with this configuration that the switch is open, the problem is first asking what is the total energy stored in this system in terms of uh, in units of millijoules. So first uh, thing before you attack the problem is that uh, you know you have to resolve this connection whether it's serially they are serially connected or parallel connected etc. Uh, for this I'm going to draw an equivalent diagram to this one so it will be very clear that uh, you know, the type of the connection between these three capacitors. Well, what you see is I just uh, redraw the same diagram, uh, completely equivalent to the uh, original picture, uh, is going to be this one. You can just, uh, you know, follow all the lines, etc., the wires, that you will yourself see that you know, this is nothing but equivalent to this one. So what you see over here, as long as you just uh, keep the switches open, uh, these three capacitances are going to be just, you know, uh, connected parallelly. And uh, about the uh, polarities, well, this is C2, and this is going to be minus, okay? This is plus. And C1 is this side is, you know, connected to the negative side of the capacitor C2, so this is going to be plus, right? And this is going to be minus. And about C3, C3, this plate is seeing the minus polarity of C1, so this is minus polarity of C1, and that polarity is plus, so this is going to be plus. And this is minus so uh, you know in terms of uh, uh, the polarities the these three capacitors also uh, you know uh, when they are connected uh, they just satisfy uh, the polarity order I mean uh, you know uh, this is what you get if you just uh, you know uh, connect three capacitors like this and apply a potential difference from this so, uh, to this and this terminal, this is uh, what you get. I mean, the polarity is going to be like, if you just connect from this, let me do this. Okay, let's change this a little bit. You know, if you connect a, well, a battery, like this, well, this point is just the same as this point. This is what you get in terms of the polarities of the plates. All right. So, <clears throat> and the other thing is, well, there is no battery connected, but uh, just in order to show that the polarity is also satisfying the serial connection uh, property. Okay. So that's it. I mean, the other thing is that, of course, when you connect the three capacitors serially, they're no, in most in the most general cases, their potential differences are not going to be the same, and the potential differences are given all, all here. For example, for C two, it has ninety volts, this has uh, sixty volts, and this has uh, uh, fifty volts. So that means if you uh, start from this point and you go in this direction, for example, if you assign that this is zero potential. And this is going to be 50 volts and 50 volts and and you cross these two plates this plate from here to here this is 50 volt this is 50 volt you cross uh, the voltage is going to increase by 60 volt so 50 plus 60 volt this point is going to be at a potential of one one uh, hundred ten volts 
and this is 110 volts you cross C2 uh, adding 90 volts 110 plus 90 it's going to be to, uh, 200 so I mean uh, the let's erase this for a moment and put the uh, uh, voltages this is 50 this is uh, 60 and this is 90 volts so it's very, I mean it's, it's very natural that it is the property of the serial connection every a capacitor in serial connection might have different potentials and polarities are okay so that means this is a perfectly uh, you know uh, uh, acceptable serial connection uh, with the uh, associated potentials so once you once you have these uh, potential differences and the capacitance is also given Capacitances in the problem are given since C1 is 16 microfarad, C2 is 24 microfarad, C3 is the 46 microfarad. With this information, you are you can easily uh, calculate the total energy of these three capacitors. Uh, well, it's going to be like uh, U total U1 plus U2 plus U3. And for the uh, uh, potential, sorry, for the uh, uh, energy, expressions you can use one half cv square because you know c's and you know v's for every capacitor this is the best suitable formula so one half uh, common parenthesis c1 v1 for that one c1 v1 c1 is this one v1 is 60 so c1 is uh, 60 multiplied by uh, v square which sorry it's not 60 c1 is uh 16 microfarad, 16 microfarad multiplied by uh, 60 volts squared plus C2 is 24 microfarad multiplied by uh, C2 has the potential difference 90 squared plus C3 has uh, 60, so 46 microfarad multiplied by uh, 50 squared. Well, I've done this. I just found uh, this to be like 183 microjoules. You can check this. I mean, just uh, plug and check these numbers in your calculator. Well, in that case, the closest answer might be this one. It says 180 microjoules. So, you know, this is the closest answer. Uh, I, I mean, and if, if you check the canvas, the quiz answer, maybe you will find this is the correct answer anyway so uh the problem is resolved that uh, we had discussed this in the in the class well, I, mean, I was tired i you know i didn't i couldn't uh, realize the connection somehow uh okay so uh, the other thing is the problem says i mean uh, the final status is going to be uh, reached when the switches are uh, closed but in fact, it, later it is asking like, what is the uh, initial uh, energy if the switches are not closed but open? So somewhat the, the, the problem, the, the text is somewhat confusing, but anyway, uh, we have just uh, calculated the uh, first energy before you close the switches. Now, what happens if you uh, close the switches? Uh, this is, right, this is the switch S1. Okay, yeah. What if you? What happens if you close these switches, right? When you close the switches, uh, what you get, for example, when you close switch S one, what you get is the potential. Uh, well, the the, the connection. Uh, let's let's close all the switches so we can maybe uh, realize what kind of connection now. Uh, becomes between these three capacitors well uh, well it's very obvious that when you close for example switch s1 well uh, these still look like they are serially connected but the thing is this point and this point is going to be at the same potential so some of the potentials differences for these capacitors are going to be negative that means you know there is going to be like uh, since these plates are just, you know, connected to each other, these plus charges and minus charges. The other thing is that since they were initially uh, serially connected, every plate 
is having the same charge and this is minus charge this is plus charge when you connect them these charges just will neutralize themselves neutralizing these charges will just get rid of any charge on capacitor c1 and c2 well if you think about these inner plates this plate and this plate these two plates also already have total charge of zero when there is no charges over here these charges will just again uh, distribute themselves so that the these those these plates also will have no any net charge so this connection just you know uh short circuits these two serially connected capacitor and meaning that the short circuit that the capacitor will just discharge these two capacitor will just discharge so when you discharge this well nothing you have right no any uh, charge then you have no energy store and the same will happen for uh, capacitors this is for this capacitor it's capacitor c3 well when you connect you know this plate by this wire to the other plate that's what you get uh, similarly these two charges will just uh, neutralize so you get uh, after you close the switches s1 and s2 closed u becomes zero 